Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker, for calling me to make my maiden speech in this debate. May I first congratulate the honourable members for Central Ayrshire, Vale of Clwyd and Eastbourne for their maiden speeches. I'm sure everyone here will join me in congratulating them for most heartfelt and eloquent statements of commitment to their constituents and to their constituencies. You will not be surprised to hear that I too am rather proud of my constituency, Bristol West. But let me now begin by paying tribute to my predecessor, Stephen Williams, for his diligent service to Bristol West and to his constituents. I was particularly impressed by his commitment to equalities, to human rights and to fair trade, causes for which we both share passion. I wish him well in his future. I would like to go further back and thank Valerie Davey, elected Member of Parliament for Bristol West in 1997. Her work helping to establish the Education Maintenance Allowance transformed the lives of thousands of young people, helping those from low and modest income families to stay on at school or college who would otherwise have found it difficult to manage financially. Sadly, this has now gone. Even further back, Deputy Speaker, is Mr William Waldegrave MP, lobbied by many in Bristol West, including myself, to take a stand in Parliament against the provisions in Section 28 of the Local Government Act 1988, which banned what was then called promoting homosexuality in schools. This hated provision held schools back from supporting and protecting many young people to the detriment of their mental health. To his credit, Mr Waldegrave listened to us, his constituents, and he acted in this place. As he was, as I now am, privileged to represent Bristol West, a constituency with a significant proportion of lesbian, gay, bisexual and transgender people, I commend him for so doing. But, Mr Deputy Speaker, my most famous predecessor is, of course, Edmund Burke MP. A favourite quote attributed to him is that all that is required for evil to flourish is that good men do nothing. This quotation cannot be fully verified as Burke's own words, and I hope that during my time in this House, I too should be so handsomely misquoted. (laughs) Mr Deputy Speaker, my constituency, Bristol West, is wonderful. People are buzzing with activity and activism on causes from gay rights to climate change, from food waste to renewable energy, and of course on the NHS. The vibrancy is palpable in business and enterprise, in creativity in music and the arts, new media and old, innovative restaurants and well-tended allotments. There is street entertainment, street stalls and street art of high quality. Do come to Bristol West, Mr Deputy Speaker, and I'll take you on a tour of the greatest works of Banksy & Co. (laughs) Yes, Bristol, Bristol is a fun city and a festival city, with festivals of one kind and another, from balloons to boats, pretty much every weekend in the summer. Thousands of people walk the streets for sheer pleasure of looking around. And, Mr Deputy Speaker, looking around is indeed a pleasure. Any stroll around my constituency of Bristol West, with listed buildings including Elizabethan almshouses, a well-preserved Norman arch, 17th century Christmas steps, Christmas steps, John Wesley Chapel, Brunel's Temple Mead Station and his suspension bridge, any visitor will know they are somewhere special. Yet we also have poverty. Poverty you can see in the streets less well visited. There are rough sleepers, some who've been there so long that I know their names. We try and look out for them and we want to see them better off. Others live in hidden homelessness, on friends' sofas, not knowing when they'll be rehoused due to chronic housing shortage and lack of cash. In parts of Bristol West, there is rising child poverty. In one ward, Lawrence Hill, more than half the children live in poverty despite the best efforts of their parents who struggle to get by on low-paid, part-time or zero-hours jobs. And this is shameful, Mr Deputy Speaker. Children growing up in poverty miss out for the rest of their lives. They are more likely to suffer poor health with damp, unsafe and unhealthy housing, air pollution and other problems, all contributing to a shorter life expectancy. As well as poverty, there is poverty of opportunity, affecting an entire generation of school leavers, 20 and 30-somethings. These are young people from across the constituency who feel that they cannot get properly started. They tell me of insecure jobs, sky-high rents and little hope. Their parents, whether on low or modest incomes, or better off, fear for their children's future and wonder if they will ever have grandchildren. This will store up trouble for our health and social care systems in the future when this generation reach their later years. It is a shocking indictment of the extent to which we do or do not, share our wealth in this country. In the 21st century, we cannot and we should not stand by and just wait for things to get better. Things only get better when we act. Why, if the nation gains in wealth, do we not all gain? Why is wealth so unevenly and unfairly distributed? In my time in Parliament, I hope to find out both the answers to these questions and the solutions, and I'll do my part in solving them. 
To return to one of Bristol's most famous sons, Isambard Kingdom Brunel, and his suspension bridge, if you stand on this bridge in a howling gale, you can feel it move. Engineers tell me that this is safer than a rigid structure, which would sooner or later snap. But Brunel did not know that. He could not be sure. So he over-engineered just to be sure that all the people crossing the bridge would be safe. This principle of building safety into a structure is surely one we should all apply to protecting health and social care and other public services and to standing up for all of the people in all of our constituencies. Yeah. Yeah. Mr Deputy Speaker, my father came to this country by sea from what was then called Madras, now Chennai, in the late 1950s. My mother, here in the gallery today, came from the working class end of Oxford, her parents trade unionists, cooperators and lifelong labour activists. You can measure just how British I am by the fact that, sadly, in common with so many of us born in this country, the only language I speak fluently is English. But in my constituency, the city of Bristol, 91 different languages are spoken. People from 50 or more different countries of origin. One quarter from black or minority ethnic backgrounds. And I'm proud to be the first non-white MP in any of the four constituencies of Bristol. Mm. Mr Deputy Speaker, I bring to this House a quarter of a century of experience in work to prevent domestic violence. I started out as a professional cellist. I have a professional and personal interest in promoting the needs of people on the autistic spectrum. I look forward to contributing these experiences, knowledge and interests to the work of this House. I am proud that I help to bring the proportions of women and people from the global ethnic majority closer to making this place more truly reflect the population of the country we serve. Mr Deputy Speaker, I seek to earn the trust of the 126,000 or so people in Bristol West to be measured by my contribution to ending poverty, tackling climate change and promoting equality, as well as by how hard I work for the people of Bristol West, who I will work for with care and with determination. Mr Deputy Speaker, I thank you for your indulgence and this House for its kind attention. Yeah. Yeah. Lynn Davis.